Okay. Hello, D'Artagnan. Hello, Kesho. Give me one second here. Just setting up. Uh, let's see. I don't know how to do anything. One second here. getting there give me one second we're getting there I know I said I'd go live at 8:30. it's not 8:30 yet it's almost 8 30 I'm gonna test the mics can you guys hear me okay you are early you're super super dedicated Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, okay? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Let's see. There we are. here for next Monday so showed up for tonight well thank you oh there there is no thumbs up emoji that's right this is like a completely new system so oh somebody found a thumbs up all right so I wish I could make this chat thing bigger because uh, my my eyes are so not great um, Hey, Jake's here. How you doing, Jake? All right. Ethan's here. Sorry. Easy Efro is here. I just got a new follow. I totally missed it. It looks like we're Edward Sully. Thanks for the follow. Okay. So I'm back again. Uh, for number two, and it looks like it's 8.31. Uh, I'm going to wait a couple minutes before I, I officially start. So, hello, Comet Candice. Um, camera's in a new spot tonight. Um, I'm still trying to set things up. You guys can see a little bit more of the studio tonight. So, uh, Amanda's side is actually over there. Uh, this back here is sort of her video game nook. Um, and, uh, you know, back behind me is, this is, this is a toy archive. So, uh, oh, the black hole, it's because it's still light out. It'll get, it'll definitely get darker in here. Um, so tonight uh, I'm going to do a kaiju, but I'm going to do like an official start. So looks like there's only 14 people in right now. Um, but people will jump on so but not that you 14 people aren't the most important people in the whole world <laughs> um okay so uh let me start officially so welcome to scribbles with chris Raniak, number two 
Uh, first one went really well, so I'm gonna do it again. Uh, you guys wanted more, so I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, tonight I'm going to be doing uh, kaiju. So normally on Fridays I do a kaiju drawing. Um, I sort of started a uh, kaiju Friday hashtag on Instagram. And uh, because kaiju are my favorite thing to draw. If you guys don't know what kaiju are, they're basically giant Japanese monsters. Um, they don't have to be Japanese, it's just that's where the name comes from. Uh, so tonight I already kind of have the, an idea set up and, uh, and I'm just going to go for it and see how long it takes. So thanks everybody for joining. Uh, Spritelings is now following. Thank you for following. Um, and hi to everybody I haven't said hello to yet. So if you guys have any questions or just want to chat about anything, just throw it out there and I'll try to keep up with the chat while I'm drawing. So I'm going to do the best that I can. So hello Dapper Kitty, if I already, if I didn't say hello to you already. And yes, Ethan, Easy Efro is a big kaiju fan. So uh, I know that I know he's going to be happy about this one. So, I'm going to get into it. Just, just checking my camera up there. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. How is everybody doing tonight, by the way? Dr. Barbados is now following. Thank you. Oh, also, we got a new light over here. So, um, trying... The other light was a little, just a little bit too oppressive. So, um, just trying... I just keep trying to improve this thing. So, hopefully it, you know, it works out great. So, all right. Again, this is the beginning stage. Uh, ah, thanks, Ed. Or Edward. Sorry, I didn't mean to just shorten your name. Uh, like I said, as always, this is the beginning stage, so this is always the, uh, the part where you see me mess up and, um, erase a lot, but it's just because I want to get, I want to get it on the paper the right way and not, uh, off to one side too much. So I drew a rough of this guy earlier, so that's what I'm, I'm referencing over here. Let's see, uh, it's raining here. Oh, is it often like that in the Pacific Northwest? Amanda was just up there in uh, Vancouver and said it was pretty gloomy. Let's see. Oh, nice, so you're done with work for all week, Candace. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty heavy work week this week, trying to get stuff ready for San Diego Comic-Con. Um, we're doing something a little different this year. And, uh, and it's just a lot of work. But once the work is done, it's stuff that we can reuse. So it's all good. It's just a lot of, a lot of stuff we don't normally do. Let's see, Cat Stoom Guy is still up on the screen. Thank you for telling me. I have the chat screen over the screen so I couldn't even tell. All right, he's getting out of here. Oh, <laughs> thanks. thanks for reminding me, Dapper Kitty. See, what I need to do is I need to get a, uh, like an iPad and set it up down where I'm drawing so I can actually see the, uh, I can actually see the chat right in front of me. I've seen a few streamers do that. Now that I'm I'm a streamer. You gotta keep up with all these youngsters and all their new technology. I won't be left behind. Yeah, we, during the spring, well, I guess it's technically summer here now. Um, I, I live in, just outside of Cleveland. And it goes from 
rainy spring weather to like oppressively hot weather like so we don't get a lot of ple pleasant weather so could set up a chat only on your phone and put it there oh that's not a bad idea i'd have to i'd have to log in give me give me one moment jake you and your ideas let me let me see Let's see. Your mega super supporter on Patreon is sold out. Any chance maybe offering more? Um, quite possibly. Um, I've been neglecting Patreon a little bit, uh, but I can. I, I definitely want to do some more stuff in there. Uh, I will definitely uh, update you guys on when I'm going to do that. But yeah, there's definitely. It's. Let me log in. I'll, 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 uh, I'll explain myself. You guys are watching me log into my phone. Riveting. Riveting. This is Jake's fault. Blame him. What? Hold on. Wouldn't it be great if I was just like, you know, scrolling through Instagram? All right, that's not going to work, so I'm not going to waste any more time on it. All right, let's see. Uh, on the Twitch app, you can set it to chat only. Um, let's see, do I ever use iPads or things like that to draw on? I do use, uh, Amanda has an iPad Pro and it's awesome. I love, I love drawing on that thing. Let's see, exciting action on the stream tonight. Will Chris log in on his phone? No, he won't. Hey, Plague Mouse, thanks for following. Let's see, do I ever talk to the folks at Toy Break anymore? Yes, I do, um, separately. Um, now that they are, uh, they are no longer a couple. So, uh, I... Talk to George. George is part of, um, he's part of the Toy Geeks Behind the Counter show now. Um, and I was actually on that show. So, uh, George has been a friend of mine for a very long time. I haven't heard from Aileen, uh, recently. I think the last time I talked to her was maybe Comic-Con last year. So, uh, not, I think she moved to Canada or something like that. Um, but I'm still good with all those people. Let's see. Oops, I didn't know that. Yeah, login fail. Yeah, I, I, you know, for the next time, I'll definitely get that set up so that I can see, uh, I can just look over and, uh, and see what I'm, what everybody's saying so I don't have to keep looking up because it's kind of a pain. First erase of the stream. There will be many more. Stay tuned. So when I do my when I do my rough drawing, um, it's always better than the final drawing because it's a lot looser. So it, it takes me a while to to kind of get the same uh, the same feeling and looseness in the in the final drawing. So it's a little little bit of a struggle at first. But I don't like to come in unprepared. Much like I was unprepared when I was logging into my phone there. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> I'm not going to keep blaming you for that. All right. You're getting there. Let's see, which is my favorite Godzilla film? You know, I don't know all the names of them. Um, I'm not that diehard of a Godzilla film, but I can say recently, just because it was so interesting, uh, I really liked Shin Godzilla, which is like a really, really recent film. Um, the, uh, the different stages of Godzilla I found to be really crazy and interesting 
but I thought what was the most interesting about it was the um, the sort of political overtone of the of, of the movie. I mean, it wasn't an undertone at all. It was very, very obvious that they were making some sort of statement about how, you know, the bureaucrats in Japan can't, can't make a decision. Um, whether I agree or disagree on that is, is besides the point, but it's, I just found it to be really interesting in a monster movie. Hot chili wrap. Hello. Um, but there's a, uh, there's a, a scene in, there's actually a couple scenes in Shin Godzilla that are the most like devastating destruction I've ever seen in a Godzilla film. I mean, Godzilla is just like, he's got this, this skin that's like armor and he, and he's like just a gnarly looking Godzilla and he just decimates the city with fire and like this, this plasma beam. It's just, it's, it was just, my son and I were watching it on, on an airplane and uh and we both like stopped and had our mouths wide open so it was uh that's that's a crazy one if you can get through all the all the talking and all the political banter uh it's it's worth those few minutes let's see i haven't seen shin godzilla yeah it's called s-h-i-n godzilla yeah it's really really interesting it's very very different and it's you know it's it's as campy as any Godzilla movie. It's not like the uh, the American Godzilla movies that are you know super dramatic and all that. But um, I thought the last um, the 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 you know the one that they did with Brian Cranston um, uh, I thought was I thought that one was pretty great too. The monster was awesome. He was like a giant Rottweiler. Let's see. The stream is in dire need of morning critter emotes. Um, I have, well, you can't sub me yet because I'm not a partner yet. Um, once you can, I'm sure I'll make those. So uh, don't worry about it right now. But thanks, Plague Mouse. Uh, curious what you thought of the Kaiju and Pacific Rim. Uh, I loved some of them. Uh, other ones I didn't love as much. I, I thought they were really good. I think I, I actually was lucky enough to see a lot of the kaiju, um, see the maquettes and stuff of them before the movie came out. And, uh, I thought some of the ones they didn't use were, were really awesome. Um, and my biggest problem with Pacific Rim was not the monsters themselves. It was how they showed them in the movie. I mean, it was always dark. It was always raining. Everything was always wet and lit by neon. Or underwater and dark. Like, I wanted to see them... I wanted to see how they were lit in daytime so that you could see the scale. Like, feel the scale of them. So, uh, let's see. Yay, catching my first stream all the way from Australia. Thanks, Allie. Um, but, uh, like I was saying, yeah, I think you, you, you know, Pacific Rim is a movie about kaiju. You should have been able to see them a little bit better, but, um, I love the fact that it was a giant monster movie. Uh, so, you know, and I, I, it was, it came out at a time where I was, you know, super into what Guillermo was doing because I was lucky enough to meet him and get a tour of his house and, and get some behind the scenes stuff um, and see all that stuff, you know, before it came out. So that, that made it extra special, but um, yeah. Let's see, it's actually hard to tell two of them apart. Of the kaiju, you mean? I, I think I know which ones you're talking about. The, I think it's like the, the is it stage five? I think his name is Slattern, is the last one. Um, and then there's an earlier one, I think that's really similar. But my favorite one is Onibaba, which is like, he's like a little crab, or he's like a huge crab. So I don't know what this guy's name is. He's from Godzilla. Um, but I got these in Japan, they're really awesome. There's just these little, like one shot Sofubis. Yeah, I know. I know which ones you're talking about. Yeah, they're really hard to tell apart. I think the 
The difference is the size and Slattern, which is the last one, he's like the biggest, biggest one, has these crazy tentacles that come off of him, but I don't think it was enough of a difference. Look at me, like, criticizing Kaiju. I love all monsters, so... I never got into Power Rangers. Um, that was a little after my time, but there was a lot of really awesome monster designs in that show, also. Oh, hello again from Tokyo. Uh, oh yeah, that's a, it's a super fun little. I got a whole bag of them, and there was like Mothra, and there was a Ghidorah, and uh, I think there was a little there was a Gamera. Um, maybe there's a Gamera. But there was like four different Godzillas in it, and I just love tiny little little Sofubi like this. So, yeah, it's really cool. I think I got this at a uh, um, Mandarake store in uh, Nagoya. So, let's see. I'm in Den Denmark. It's late. I should sleep, but not. Nah. Well, thank you for staying up. Um, let's see. I'm a Kamen Rider fan myself. Uh, yeah, oh my gosh, there was so much Kamen Rider stuff at, at all the, the Mandarake stores. There's so many things that I just, like, because I grew up here, I know everything from here, but I'm not, I'm not really versed in the ways of all the pop culture from the past in Japan. I'm learning a little bit about it. Um, but uh, I didn't really know much about Kamen Rider either. My, my favorite toys that I saw over there were from, a, um, I don't know if it was a cartoon or a, a, an anime or a, um, like a show, but it was called Tiger Mask. Uh, but the, the toys are amazing. The vintage toys are so funny. Um, and I just wanted to buy them, but they're so expensive. They're like these like wrestle, wrestler guys with... Um, like literally like, like a tiger mask that would go over their head and they have a cape on. Um, those guys were really funny. All right, we're starting to get there with this guy. So he's going to be like looking over his shoulder. He's kind of like got like a dog, dogish body. Let's see, Mandarake is crazy. The vintage toys, if you saw them, go for hundreds. Yeah, I saw some of them were like thousands. Uh, There's one in particular in uh, in Nakano, Broadway, that had, it's like a museum of vintage, vintage toys, and there's some amazing stuff in there. Oh, Tiger Mess is live action tonk, Tonksatsu? I don't know what that means. Have I ever read Ready Player One? No, I have not. I've been hearing a lot about it lately, though, but um, chances are if it's a book that comes in book form, I have not read it. I am I am not a good reader. Uh, I spent most of my time with sketchbooks and clay uh, when I was younger, so uh, I'm not a, I'm, I'm a bad, I'm a bad reader. I've read a few books as an adult that, um, you know, I read a lot of books when I was a, when I was a teenager because it was part of my school, but uh, I read a lot of books, a, a few books as an adult that were really good. Let's see. I have your coloring book, but I love it so much I just can't draw in it. Oh, well, that's what it's for. Just have fun with it. Um, let's see. There's going to be a movie version next year or something. That's what I had heard. I know T.J. Miller's in it. That's the only thing I know about it. It's action Japanese uh, shows normally involving mass characters and man-sized kaijus and lots of choreographed action and explosions. Oh, that's awesome. See, I, see, I learned something. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I don't, that's, that's really funny. So is, does Power Rangers fall into that category or is that, is that a different, I thought I had heard that that was called a different category all to itself but i could be wrong i don't know i i don't know anything because power rangers is still pretty big over there from what i know let's see <laughs> buy a second coloring book 
Yeah, you could buy a second coloring book. I, I know quite a few people, like, sometimes we'll get orders for, like, five and six coloring books. I think they're buying them for classrooms and stuff, but I have heard of a few people that, that bought two copies, one to draw it and one to just put on their shelf. But I can't tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm just very grateful that you bought one. Let's see. I have three, one for colored pencil, one for watercolor, and one to keep. Wow, that's really dedicated. Uh, yes, I have two for me and one for my husband, but it breaks my heart to ruin them. Oh, you're not ruining them. You're having fun with them. Let's see. Yeah, Super Sentai. That's, that's, what, I've, that's what I've heard. I do want to say the wrong word and embarrass myself. I'll just embarrass myself in other ways. All right, this guy's getting there, getting there. <sighs> see, oh, Amanda's in the chat. Amanda's in the other room today. Let's see, wild Amanda spotting. I might, I might make Amanda the, the moderator, and then she can, she can mess with you guys. So many of you guys have been here since the first one so long ago. Let's see, I've been a fan for literally years and you were my early inspiration to get me off my butt and create my plush toy company. Oh, thank you so much. No, thank you so much. That's really awesome. I appreciate that. I'm glad, well, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Let's see, how's the living room? <laughs> I love that you guys are still going to have conversations with her even though she's in the other room. She's just got to get her own channel, or we just have to do uh, a joint Twitch show. It'll be me working and Amanda making comments from the sidelines. All right, so Amanda and I went on a, a grand outing today. We actually left the house. Um, oh, thank you, Rebecca. Um, so we left the house and did all the, you know, the super exciting uh, excursions to the department, the department store to buy. Uh, uh, no, we didn't go to Dairy Queen. Oh, somebody got somebody got modded, but I'm gonna allow it. Um, because you used a bad word. Uh, let's see, glass my Um, thank you so much, Plague Mouse. I appreciate it. So anyway, we went we went to the store to buy a bunch of junk for the house and all that. And and uh, I was looking for a, uh, a a gift for my dad for Father's Day. So we went to Cabela's, which is this like you know out, outdoorsman store. They sell all these you know fishing and hunting and and uh, you know man stuff store. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit of a fisherman. I've, I used to fish all the time when I was younger. Um, but recently I haven't fished in many years and recently I, I bought myself a fishing rod that is literally this long. I mean, it's that big because I want to catch tiny fish in the, in the streams. <laughs> so I bought like this whole tackle box. that's about this big and I bought literally the smallest hooks I could find. And there's like all these giant trophy animals and fish everywhere. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, no, I just want the smallest thing I can, <laughs> the smallest thing I can find. Cause I'm, you know, super manly. I gotta show up how tough I am by catching the smallest fish I can catch. So that was my, uh, that was my outing for the day. Exciting, I know. Random question, do you and Amanda have pets? No, we don't. Uh, I, when I first moved into this house about four or five years ago, I had a cat. Um, but she was very old and she has passed on. So uh, I, we travel a lot and we don't, 
want to kind of deal with that. And also, I had my pets for, I had my dog and my cat for a really long time. Uh, my dog lived till she was 15, 14 or 15. And my, um, my cat was 19. And uh, they lived through my, my, my kids being born and my divorce and college and all that stuff. And, and when, they, when they were gone, I just felt like I was trying to replace them. So I did not want to get more. So uh, maybe someday, but not yet. Let's see. Dude went to Cabela's and Walmart. Yeah, that's where we went. Um, wouldn't be more effective running a knee suck on the <laughs> than using a tiny pole um yeah but it's not as fun let's see amanda is the boss got it not well yeah i'll let her think that let's see oh steve how's it going steve yes lucky was the absolute best dog ever um, you, my cat made it to 19 too. Yeah, it's amazing how long cats can live. Let's see. Oh, D'Artagnan's asking about wine. I'll stay out of this. Sorry for your loss of your cat and your dog. Great ages and made it too. I think so too. They lived really super full lives and it was sad to see them go, but it was like clear that it was time. Let's see. We'll have to somehow live stream Chris fishing. He's a pro at catching critters. Oh, thank you. Anyone remember miniature collectibles such as Crazy Bones? I totally remember Crazy Bones. They were made out of the hardest durometer plastic I have ever seen anything made out of. It, it was so dense that like when you touched them onto any hard surface, they would just bounce like crazy. So, let's see. <laughs> IRL streams are there for that. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> That's live streaming when you go streaming and fishing in the stream very good it's like the dad jokes dad jokes live stream you're in good company here let's see some of the smidgen colors you were showing me on the other stream remind me of crazy bones this is a club tail kaiju yeah kind of um then when i had that club tail dragon but i wanted to make this like this really fat club tail like something that looked like it, it weighed a ton and I know there was a there was a dragon in, in how to train a dragon I can't remember what kind of dragon it was but it had an awesome huge club tail like this he was much fatter but this guy's more like a more cat like let's see <laughs> see Amanda agrees with me plague yeah Let's see, people stream themselves literally street, literally sleeping. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh, thank you, Steve. See, I got, Steve knows my, uh, he knows my naming convention. So he's got it down. So there's always like some, there's like double consonants always. So the, the rule is, if it sounds like it's something you found in, at Hogwarts, uh, it's probably named properly. And I named them that way because, well, a couple of reasons. One is because the chances of, so if I make a product that's named something uh, odd, like this guy. Remember this guy? This is Kango Rumple. Um, and if I name him something weird like that, uh, chances are nothing else is going to be named that. So if you search for this, this is the only thing you're going to find on the internet. So... But yeah, Steve's are usually obscene. So if you write one of those in, Steve, it's going to get modded. <laughs> Let's see, I've found a way to curb your swearing. <laughs> Let's see, I also really like Keshi, which are tiny rubber Japanese toys. Yeah, Keshi are, are pretty awesome too. Um, I think muscle figures are, are considered Keshi. Um, so, there we go. That one uh, was from Easy Efro in the chat here he actually gave me a whole bag of these so when I was a kid I was too uh, I, don't, I don't want to say I was too poor but for some reason we just never I never got these guys and I always wanted them so uh, and I never got them I had like five of them but uh, yeah uh, Ethan hooked me up with a whole bag of these and I'm super stoked on them so thank you 
<laughs> See how Steve Dagnabbit? This is a Pomerania dragon. No. There's no there's no fur on this dragon. I do have lots of relevant stuff in hand reach. Most of what I have in within reach. So I'm trying to figure out a way to set up the camera so you can actually see my collection, um, which I might show at the end, but uh, because it's way more interesting than what's back here. Um, so I just got to figure out a better way to show it. I, I haven't really figured it out yet, but let's see. Let's see, I found those in my basement. I forgot I sent those. You know, so there was a, um, oh, I might do a room tour later. Uh, there was, a, there's a store, speaking of Nakano Broadway, um, there's a store that sells nothing but Keshi figures, and they're, they're all these, um, you know, like little rubber figures, but you can fit like 10,000 of them in one store, which is awesome. So they're just everywhere. Let's see, Captain Daiko. Daikyo? Thanks for following. Um, so, I mean, probably more than 10,000 of them in one store because they're all the size of those muscle figures. Uh, but, yeah, the, I, I could really easily fall down that, that rabbit hole. Let's see. How many muskamoots uh, do you now own? Uh, I think I have, myself, I think I have 12. Let's see. Uh, you can get two cams. Oh yeah, I could hook up another camera that's that, but thing is I want to be able to see like this camera to see something more interesting. So we'll, we'll figure it out. So hello, Captain Daikyo. Let's see. Yeah, I do have two cams, but I'd need three. So let's see. Bio cosplay. Thanks for following. You're probably over here because, uh, my buddy, um, Bill over at Punish Props uh is hosting my stream now which is really awesome so uh that is super rad that he did that he's a good friend of mine let's see uh you should show everyone your house too yeah our house is kind of a it's kind of a museum at some point we'll we i don't like to show it because it's really polarizing people people get a little freaked out because it, it's like a natural history museum and there's lots of taxidermy so um it really weirds some people out. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Steve got mo modded again. <laughs> Let's see. Fascist bots are on the rise. Yeah, sorry, Steve. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Lady Longshanks, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for popping in the stream. Um, yeah, I, know, I like to use Bill's... Uh, Phil's face in there, Brit. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I, Steve is going to get the record for most most mods. Uh, let's see. I don't know if it's possible for you, but if you put a green screen behind you, you could change your backdrop and be a picture of your collection. I'd actually thought of that. Um, I'm going to look into that. Let's see. The more I get modded here, the dirty I'll get in our Slack. Oh, so we have a Slack channel, and Steve, uh, Steve, Steve has the most colorful language I've ever. Steve is a Steve's the guy who who handles all the shipping for our store and and he's a, he keeps us on track. So uh, give some love to Steve, Uncle Steve there. Let's see. Uh, you still have toys on sale or for sale? Uh, we will have we're having a sale in the store, uh, which is Bindlewood.com, on uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, uh, and we will have purple smidgens on sale he's real it's really dark doesn't like to show up maybe it'll show up here a little purple smidgen uh and i'll have about 45 original drawings so uh see yeah uh, uh, steve is an amazing yo-yo player so he's a he's a, a yo-yo master let's see uh plans for sculpting strams um yeah possibly uh, like I said, the, the problem I run into is, uh, so the streaming is awesome, but I have to cram in things that I'm already doing into the stream. Uh, so like I'm doing these drawings, I'm, I was going to do a drawing already anyway, but if I was going to stream a sculpt, it would have to be something that I was doing for work. And often, um, 
I don't like to show stuff off before it's finished or before it's available. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to show stuff that's in progress that, um, that I'm okay showing on a stream before it's finished. So, yeah. Let's see, guest stream, get Groman and Skull something. No, I'm not going to get Groman on here. He's too good. <laughs> uh, let's see, do we ship internationally? Yes, we, uh, we ship everywhere in the world. And before uh, people start complaining about shipping prices, it's not our fault. That's just the way. Shipping stuff internationally is just expensive. So, um, but we ship everywhere. Everywhere that will accept a package, we will ship to. Let's see. We'll sign. I'll sign an NDA. Yeah, I. Like I said, most of the some of the stuff is for productions. I can't show it, but like some of the stuff, I I might be able to figure something out. Let's see. Wow, we cracked fifty viewers! Yay! Everybody, high five everybody else. Let's see. Uh, could pre-record a video of sculpting, then play it live in the chat. I could do that. That's not a bad idea. Um, do one-off sculpt for sale at five points next year, possibly. Let's see, Aussie shipping always sucks. I'm used to it. Well, thank you. I appreciate you still buying despite the uh, the difficulty getting things over there. Yeah, I, when whenever we have to ship um, artwork to other countries for shows and stuff, we're we're often stuck with a a very high shipping bill. Um, so we understand too. All right, so this guy um, is pretty well roughed in. So I kind of know what I'm going to do with him. So now I can start uh, doing the uh, the detail. Well, actually doing like, not the detail, but the, the darker line work. So that'll be for the finished drawing. Let's see. High fives in the air nearby. <laughs> No, it's awesome. We we had 50, we had over fifty. We had fifty three at one point. So that's that's pretty awesome. Um, not bad for a, for a second stream. I'm I'm pretty stoked that people are digging it. So, uh, yeah, this is this is going well, everybody. I'm surprised this many people would want to hang out. Let's see, a Fingal Bottom Fart Slooner. That's a good one, Steve. I'm gonna have to add that one to the list. When you sculpt, what products do you like to use? Oh, I had over 70. Wow, that's awesome. See, I wasn't even paying attention. Um, what products do I like to use? When you say products, I assume you mean what types of clay do I use? Oh, somebody's sneaking in to the studio here. I think you're about to get an Amanda sighting. You can keep answering your question. I don't, uh, I don't want to disturb. Um, See, she's just hijacking Hi. the thread. Um, so you guys can keep watching because chances are a pretty girl will walk into the oh, thread. Oh, Josh, who is it? Um, I'll kick her butt. So the products I like to use is uh, typically I use monster clay to sculpt with, and then I make molds using smooth on products. Um, oh, yes, yeah, she has wine. Let's okay. see. Uh, but I've been mixing CX5 with uh, Monster Clay lately, which is actually getting a really interesting result. Can you do an object Let's lesson? see. Um, possibly? Yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Ever done plushies of your Critter Monsters? No, but it's on the list. Uh, you have antique stamps from uh, Romania on one of your monsters. I'm from Romania. That's actually Amanda has the, the, oh, yeah. the antique stamps. Um, Hi, Amanda, share the wine. Monster <laughs> clay with a heart, yes. So monster clay is, uh, looks like that, looks like chocolate, um, but it's not chocolate, is actually produced really close to here. So we actually get to go to the, the headquarters and just pick it up. And this is CX5. So uh, I'm so late, forgot about the time difference. There's still plenty more left to do. So uh, thank you for popping in. Um, yeah, there's still, I'll be here a while. Um, as you can see, the drawing is really, really a naked baby stage. So, so this is monster clay. Oh, here we go. Maybe down here. Maybe yeah. down here would be better. So this Here's is some monster clay. This is monster clay. It's well, it's kind of mixed in with some of the CX5. You can see I was cleaning off my. Just don't get your hands greasy. My uh, 
my tools on it. So that's monster clay. Here's some CX5. And this is, is super hard. CX5. It's super hard, and you can see like where I broke it. It just kind of like broke into shards. So, and then uh, I've been mixing them together. And Which I know you guys don't have smell o vision. It's yeah. It smells like a chai I'm, latte. Amanda hates the smell of it. So. Uh, I'm mixing them together and it's been making a really nice like sort of firm yet a little plasticky version of monster clay. It's because I've been working really super small like like this big and uh, I needed something that was going to hold the details. So there you go. That's That was my experiments in clay. Um, but like I said, I'll, I'll figure out the, the sculpting thing if you guys are already tired of my drawing stream. Amanda's gonna butt into the stream literally every time. I, I think it's because she lives here. <laughs> and also this is her studio this is also. This my studio. Let's see, uh, do you have to warm up monster clay? Uh, are you mixing it one to one? Uh, no, I'm actually using a little more um, monster clay than CX-5. Um, do you have to warm up monster clay? You don't have to. You can just use your fingers to warm it up, um, which is why I was mixing it because it was getting my fingers were like melting it. Um, but if you do melt it, you can do really cool things like pour it into a mold, which is awesome. So don't you 3D print them? No, I don't 3D print them. Uh, the toys, um, Thimble Stump Hollow, were all 3D printed uh, as the master, but um, no, I hand sculpt everything. Um, yeah, monster clay is pretty hard in cold temperature. It's pretty hard. There's also, I think there's three different grades of monster clay now. Let's see. I'm not tired of you drawing. Okay, good. Let's see. Uh, tired of drawing streams? Never! Uh, thank you. Uh, I've been doing some small stuff with Apoxy Sculpt. So, I used to do all my large-scale sculptures using, um, Magic Sculpt, which is basically, uh, the same thing as Apoxy Clay. Um, it has a little bit of different texture to it, um, but and I would put them over top of foam armatures. And uh, still, I'm working on a very large sculpture right now um, that is the same way, but I'm using a product called Freeform Habitat, which is a, another two-part uh, epoxy-based clay. Um, but it starts off really super sticky, and it's more like a it's more like peanut butter when you start but you mix it in this powder, it's called folding powder, it's sort of like a starch. And the more folding powder you add in, the firmer it gets. So you can actually kind of, um, uh, you can adjust the firmness of the, of the clay, which is really nice because I'm trying to cover a large area and mixing Magic Sculpt can really hurt my hands because I have arthritis. So it's really difficult for me to, to mix that stuff. So this new product is actually pretty great and it's black. So let's see. Steve keeps getting modded. Oh, Steve. I'm going to allow this one, but Steve. <laughs> he said, I'm out. going to start my own Twitch channel with Blackjack and Hookers. <laughs> oh, Steve. Steve, you're a charmer. <laughs> let's see. Uh, how long before Amanda starts making sound effect noises in the background like last <laughs> time? You didn't have to wait long, did you? <laughs> let's see. Yeah, so Steve's an uh, Steve's an adult. He's a proper proper grimy old man. So uh, uh, I'm gonna have to apparently keep, <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep the mod bot all the way turned up if Steve's gonna keep coming around. So uh, what's great is Steve swears like that in front of his children. So um, oh, Steve swears worse than Steve's that. Steve's a charmer, um, but I wouldn't want to change him. Because then who would I talk about? All right. So the rough is done. So now I'm going to start. Let's see. Automod is poop. Um, well, until I can, until I'm doing this for a little while longer and I get some, some of you guys to mod for me, uh, I'm going to keep the auto mod on because I'm afraid somebody's going to pop in and be super obscene because I know, I know some kids watch this stuff. So uh, I have children, so I'm just trying to be... I'm just trying to be uh, sensitive to that stuff. So, I'm not trying to be a, you know, content cop, but trying to keep it safe, kids. 
Okay, if you guys didn't, if you uh, if you weren't around last time, I explained the the two pencils. Um, the black pencil is a 2B lead. Uh, they're both 0.5 millimeter. Uh, the 2B lead is harder, and the blue one is a 3B lead. So um, I'm going to switch to the 3B lead because it's softer and much darker. So you guys might have just heard my Slack uh, alert say. pop up. Because Steve just had to pop into the Slack channel and swear some more. <laughs> Let me turn this off. Let's see. <laughs> I imagine grumpy old Steve playing blackjack with with can can girls in the background. Yeah, that's probably that's probably accurate. All right. Let's see. Let me start getting this thing finished. The great thing about Steve is he went through this phase where he was wearing nothing but like really dapper vintage tweed jackets and bow ties. And Steve's got a lot of tattoos and a beard and he's got a tattoo on his head and uh, and he's a really gruff dude and seeing him dress like that was just awesome. So he's kind of out of that phase right now. I hope it comes back soon. He's swearing behind the scenes. He's usually swearing in front of the scenes. This is the first time I've been able to stop him. Let's see. <laughs> the path of least mod resistance. Yeah, well, he'll probably call me or text me and tell me I swear. Do I draw every day? Um, yes, I do draw every day. Um, somebody asked, what the heck is Slack? So Slack is a messaging program that we use for um, internal messaging for our business. So since Sorry. since Steve is uh, since Steve is our shipping manager um, and he keeps things uh, on track for us, uh, we just have um, a Slack channel set up so that we can communicate uh, pretty easily. So see, sounds like Steve is from Portland. I think Steve would fit in pretty well in Portland, although he'd just want to get in fights with everybody up there. Alright, this is where the detailing happens. I'm still having a hard time uh, adjusting to the way that I have to be far away from my paper because the camera is like literally right here. Um, usually like my face is sitting on top of the paper when I'm drawing. But somebody asked if... Uh, oh no, the stream went down. Uh -oh. Let's see. Um... Is the stream still up for you? It was like kind of slow for a minute, but it seems okay now. Nope. I'm, getting, I'm getting this weird thing where everybody's comments appear double. Oh, that's weird. I just broke my first lead. I'm going to quit it and start Let's see. Room. Somebody said refresh. Okay. Do I ever have art blockage where I can't get things down on paper? It's my biggest challenge. Um, no. Uh, I've never had... Um, People always say, oh, do you, have, do you get artist block? Um, no. I, I don't and I haven't. Um, I can't really think of the longest period of time where I couldn't get something done. Um, there's definitely days where, you know, things get in the way. Life gets in the way of, of getting your work done. But um, my, my philosophy is always just sort of to push through it. Um, keep trying, or if you need to walk away and do something else, um, you know, for a few minutes, or write lists, or, you know, just start making shapes or something, um, that's, if you stop altogether, uh, you're not really making progress. So what I typically do when I get stuck, um, if I just don't have a, if I don't have a concept, I just start drawing. I just start making shapes that are that are either unrecognizable or recognizable to me and just see what I can pull out of them. Let's see. <laughs> get, 
get a GoPro and slap it on your head and film. That'd actually be pretty pretty funny. Let's see. Uh, would I customize a blank puddle sprue? No. Um, I am like trying to customize the least amount of vinyl pieces as possible. We may do a few custom Thimble Stump Hollow, uh, but I'm kind of not. I'm not customizing anything vinyl. Um, because it's a sort of an unstable uh, medium uh, and I don't have the proper paint set up for that so uh, I'll do resin and, and wood and but I won't do vinyl just because I don't trust how, how stable it is let's see okay I hate questions like this but how long did it take for you to get the style that you have today and how did it evolve from your beginning 41 years <laughs> that's the answer um, I've been I've been doing this literally as long as I can remember. Actually, I've been doing this since before I can remember. Um, and you know, I didn't I didn't always draw from life. Like I drew I drew tons from life when I was in art school and even after that. Um, but this just sort of it's been evolving since I started. Um, and you know when I when I was doing my own art, oh creepy glow bug is now following. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I forget what I was saying. So uh, when I was doing like gallery paintings and stuff, I was I was doing a style that was still my own, but it was definitely like through this filter of. Of, I wanted to be a serious artist and I wanted people to take me seriously. So I was making art that was very serious and not, not very fun. Um, it was just sort of strange and had a lot of like weird metaphors and things like that. And, and it, it, it felt a little presumptuous and, and, and it just wasn't, it wasn't really, I wasn't really being true to what I wanted to do. I was trying to fit into like this sort of pop pop surrealist movement and um and it, because it, that was the type of stuff that i liked looking at um but from there i got kind of fed up with doing that and and i was always just sort of like one step behind success doing that stuff and and i had a moderate amount of success and still some some of the people that are my fans now actually started from back then um but when i started doing sculptures and i started just focusing on just just the monsters and, and like the really cute monsters that I always had hiding in the background. Um, I noticed that I was starting to have a lot more fun with my work and also uh, my fans were enjoying the work more too. So um, I feel like this is more genuine to what I want to be doing. Um, but like I said, I don't know if I would have known that if I hadn't gone through the other stuff. So. Let's see, my Wi-Fi went down. Oh no, I feel like my Wi-Fi goes out three times a day. Let's see, Amanda singing in the background. That'll happen. <laughs> yeah, she'll probably do that. She's got her headphones on. Let's see, what? You're in your 40s here. I thought you were in your early 30s. Oh, well, thank, thank you so you much. Thank you, Chili Wrap. Thank you so much. Yes, I am 41 years old. Um, uh, I have two children, one of which is 16 years old. Uh, and I've been doing this a while. <laughs> I've been doing this for quite some time. Uh, I started showing in galleries in 2000, I think. So I started like my my independent art career like 17 years ago. So it's been been a long long road. I started doing uh, illustration for magazines and stuff. Um, magazines, remember those? Uh, uh, I started doing illustrations for magazines in 98 when I was still in college. And uh, I did that for quite some time. I did a lot of stuff for a lot of big magazines. Um, and I thought that that was what my career was going to be. And, and then, uh, you know, 9-11 happened and the, that, that market just like, dried up completely for me. So uh, then I went and got a job. Let's see, do we have any gallery, do Amanda and I have any gallery shows this year? 
Uh, no, we don't have any gallery shows this year. We are doing um, what will amount to the same amount of work as a gallery show, um, and will be displayed similarly to a gallery show for uh, Tokyo Comic Con. Uh, we're still not sure exactly how that's going to be um, the purchasing instructions and all that. We're not sure how they're going to handle that yet. Uh, it'll be through uh, Tomenosuke. Um, as soon as we know, we will announce it. But that, that's that, that's going to be a lot of a lot of pieces. So it'll be like I said, it'll basically be like uh, like a gallery show, but it'll be um, in a comic con. So that's the only big thing we're doing this year. Uh, I mean, we, we, we're doing lots of conventions. We're doing, we did Five Points. We're doing San Diego Comic-Con. We're doing Designer Con. Um, so, you know, we did one more convention this year than we did last year. Uh, we attended a couple of conventions. Um, so, you know, with, with doing the convention, it left a little less room to do more art so well they there'll be more stinky ginger pieces uh i am not in control of that um that's a circus posturus uh product i'm not sure if they are going to continue to produce stinky ginger um i would say i doubt it uh but never say never let's see ah oh, why so far away i wish Wish I was in America or I could make it to Japan maybe one day. Where where are you at, Allie? Um, you know, because we're showing in Japan, which means, you know, there's the chance that we could show anywhere, really. Um, but we're... See, I keep breaking my lead. I had a busted one in there. Um, we're, we're moving a little bit away from gallery work just for a little while, just so we can focus on some, some other things, like our... our our own branding and products and stuff. Boy, that is a bad piece of lead. Hold on one second. I had a, a really brittle piece of lead in there. My lead won't advance. So exciting. Okay, let's see. Uh, you still need to get a local show going. Um, that may happen. There's a good chance that's going to happen. Let's see. Uh, Australia. Well, Australia is definitely on my list of places that I want to go. Uh, so, uh, like I said, when we want to go someplace, sometimes we just try to make it happen. So, um, don't, I won't say never. I'll say anything's a possibility at this point. We like, we were just discussing earlier how much uh, Amanda and I love traveling, so, and how much uh, we, it's just sort of become this thing that is a huge part of our lives now that I can't imagine not traveling as much. Um, so, we may make it to Australia. Let's see, bad lead. Yes, Derek. Let's see. Heck yeah, local show. Yes, I totally want to do a show close by so I don't have to ship anything. Um, let's see. I will buy all your plushies when they come out one day. It's, it's definitely on the list. Let's see. Yes, Australia. Come. Yes, I definitely want to come to Australia. Let's see. <laughs> don't mess with me. Uh, I'm not messing with you. It's something we want to do. Uh, and Steve would be involved. Let's see. Hawaii Kauai Con is getting bigger and bigger too. Huh. Ha Linda did? Hawaii, no, Kauai. Kauai. That's a lot of I. That's a lot of I. But there's a lot of um. There's, there's a lot of cute in what we do. Let's see, local show. I'm in PA, so I'll be there. Yeah. So we're hoping maybe next year we'll we'll do a local one. Let's see. Uh, what are my favorite activities to do while traveling? Eating. In that order. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, fifth year now, I'll send you the details. Uh, thank you, Derek. Um, let's see. Amanda, Chris, studio sale as a local show. Uh, no, probably not. It probably, we'll probably rent out a space. 
Let's see. We don't have the appropriate yeah. insurance on our house. Yeah, no, I don't want strangers in my house. Let's see. Uh, kawaii equals cute. Oh, yeah, you know, because you go to Japan a lot. Yeah, and when I go to Japan and I, the people come up to our, our work, they always go, kawaii. But you have to be careful because doesn't kawaii mean, like, scary? Oh, I think so. So it's kawaii. At the end. Yeah. But, yeah, it's always funny. Let's see. What what are some other activities I like to do while traveling? Um, it's almost always based around food. Uh, we, we like to, to food, like local shop. Culture. Yeah, yeah, like local local culture and. I want to know what people are into there. Um, we're this is probably not going to be surprising in any way. We really like old old cemeteries, and especially in. Japan, the cemeteries are so old. Uh, they're like part of the landscape. Um, so there's some really beautiful, and they're all the you know the 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 gardening and the landscaping inside the the cemeteries is often really beautiful. So um, so we usually check that stuff out. We like to you know we like to try to find things that are old. We like little novelties too, like we took the Setagaya line, the train. Which oh is yeah. The tiniest little train we could find. Yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, I think just trying to find things that that are unfamiliar to us, that that are are specifically for that region. Let's see, Blizzagog is now following. Thank you so much. Let's see. Uh, what's your favorite place you? Oh wait, hold on. Let's see. What's the worst about traveling? Um, I'm big and plane seats are small and uh, first class is expensive, so we fly economy. Um, that's the worst. Uh, I think airplanes, um, I think airlines could definitely do a way better job of accommodating people. Uh, what's the favorite place you've ever traveled to? Uh, I think Takayama, Japan. Um, maybe um, Shirakawa Go is pretty amazing too. Um, but I think Takayama, Japan, is my favorite place I've ever traveled to. Let's see, then you will like Dracula's castle. So my family is actually from, from that region. Um, my, my very far back ancestors are from that region. Let's see. Uh, I would love to go there. Let's see. Uh, did House Elf Ben inspire today's morning scribble? Um, no, I think Amanda may... You just asked me, you said, what kind of fairy? You said, what should I draw? And I said, a fairy. Yeah. And you said, what kind of fairy? <laughs> and I said, a sock fairy. Yeah, so it was Amanda's fault. Didn't we decide that he finds the lost socks and reunites them with yeah. his partners? Yeah, the ones that are like lo get lost in the laundry? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Fact, Chris and Amanda have a moat around their house and a dungeon. Uh, we don't have a moat. You would love to have a moat. I would you love that. Left. I'd love to have a moat <laughs> and a, t like, a 200-foot wall. I'd love to have that. Let's see. Um, would you and Amanda ever live in a foreign place for an extended period? I always wanted to spend a year in Japan. Yeah, after uh, your kids are grown. Yeah, for sure. Like, I would love to just, um kind of move around a lot actually like it'd be great to have the, like a home base here and then just move around you know to different places so let's see takiyama is amazing awesome meat and knives <laughs> the heat of beef man. the heat of beef is amazing let's see so when uh when amanda and i went to japan we were vegetarians and we decided that um this is the first time we went um, we've been there four times now. Um, four times or three times? Or we, this will be our fourth. This will be our fourth time this year. Uh, we decided we didn't want to be rude, so it, because most of the food in Japan is not vegetarian either, has some sort, sort some form of fish or pork in it. So we decided we were just going to forego vegetarianism for the trip. And uh, and just eat whatever is put in front of us because also like we didn't know if we would ever be in Japan again. Um, so we uh, we did that. We ate amazing things and came back and we have not been vegetarian since. And that was like six years ago. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it ruined it for us. Let's see. Uh, I'm a lurker on a while. 
I do some S. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, so all artists who ask that artist bot question just catch a wild Amanda. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Let's see. I'm a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for a very long time. I'm just not anymore. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't still kind of think the same way about, you know, about food. Uh, I don't go crazy with it. But, uh... I was for almost ten years. Yeah, I think I was vegetarian for like seven or eight years. So, yeah, but Japan definitely ruined it for us. But we try to be really conscious about like where we get our food and stuff. And, um, you know, we're starting to grow some of our own food. We have a really, we have, we have baby, baby lettuce wings. It's a pathetic garden. It'll get better. Uh, what did we have for dinner tonight? Should we just tell them what we had for dinner last night? Yeah, it was really good. Um, cause we just ate out tonight. We were in a hurry. We were, we were in a hurry. Uh, we just went to Jimmy John's tonight. Uh, last night I made, um, I made, uh, grilled pork loin and what else did we have? We had, we had corn, corn on the on cob, the cob and, and a nice salad. we had a big, big salad. So that's what we had last night. Let's see. How long were you vegetarian before that? Like I said, I think it was like eight years. So I was actually vegan for about uh, maybe nine months or so. Uh, I was, it, it was completely health um, related. I was having some some super high cholesterol problems and I just, I just went vegan to, to fix it. And, uh, and it worked, it totally worked. It helped me lose a lot of weight too. Let's see. Farmer Amanda and her pipsqueak garden. Oh, that would be a sad garden. We should make some it's little pipsqueaks to like, go in the garden. Bottle caps and like burnt matchsticks stuck into the dirt. See, I'm like convinced that he would just really surprise you. Like he looks like a big dummy. Oh, but he's and then you go out there and you have place. like yeah, these like you know, like like a county fair winning the zucchini. Shiniest tomato you've ever seen. Right. And it weighs fourteen pounds. <laughs> like it's yeah, the, on his face it, it just says dumb. But yeah, maybe we just underestimate him. I I just say let him loose in the garden and see what happens. I mean, it'll prob we'll probably go out there and just see a bunch of tiny bite marks and everything. Yeah. But, uh... He might surprise you. He might surprise you. I'm not going to start making little little minifigures to go hang out in the garden, though. They can just hang out in the garden. So, I had this, I had this idea to, uh... This, this may still happen someday. I had this idea to make figures out of biodegradable material that um, when you put it in the garden it it breaks down and then turns into plants so it's you know in it's sort of impregnated with seeds and then uh, and then when it breaks down um, it turns into a pile of plants but then inside it is a tiny like resin figure so uh, it's like poop pets. It's yeah. sort of it's sort of like poop pets, but in it and it's also sort of like those um, those bath bomb things that have like a toy inside. Like a garden so yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So like, once it breaks down, um, you get the little figure out of it, but it actually goes through this transformation. But that's the type of thing, man. I don't even know. I don't even know where to start with that. I don't even know how to mold things properly. Let's see. Cool idea. Sounds amazing. I would totally buy those. Uh, great idea. Thank you. Yeah, it's something I've been thinking about that for years. Let's see. Um, we got rhubarb, zucchini, tomatoes, potatoes, strawberries, etc. in our garden. Wow, you're doing awesome. Rhubarb, your favorite. Yeah, rhubarb is my favorite. Um, I let's like see. rhubarb. I'd buy anything you, you both make. Oh, thanks. I made a pretty good pie yesterday. Yeah, she made a chocolate chess pie. It was pretty amazing. She's going to make a second one for this weekend because we ate it all. <laughs> oh, we still have some left, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I don't like pie at all. All right, so uh, I got all of the line work down. 
Now I'm going to start shading this guy. I'm going to start with the eyeball because that way it gives me a basis for how dark things need to get. Let's see. Strawberry rhubarb anything is the best. Mm -hmm. You guys can go ahead and enjoy that. The thing I like about rhubarb is like it tastes a little bad. <laughs> but I really like You have it. this thing about like like liking your fruit to be a little rotten. Yeah. Like it's a little bit a little earthy. I really like it. What do they call the, the like the the vegans that will only eat things that fall on the ground? Fruitarian? Is that a fruitarian or well, is that no, a, that's... Or is that a, a freegan or a fleegan? Fruitarian is that you only eat the things off of plants that don't kill the plant when you harvest it. Okay. So, like, you couldn't eat a carrot because the carrot is the life-sustaining part of the plant. Okay. But you could eat an apple. I feel like you just take that a step further and just pick the fruit and throw them on the ground and then watch them rot for a while and then eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'm allergic to strawberries. No rhubarb. No thanks. See, I'm with you. Oh, Let's you're see. allergic to strawberries. Like Somebody said, uh, yum, send some pie. By the time I got there, it wouldn't be any good. Uh... I'm with you, Chris. Rhubarb is nasty. Yes! Team no rhubarb. <laughs> hey, I've tried it. I've tried it many times. I just don't like it. Rhubarb um, pudding? I don't even know what that oh, is. Oh, no. I'm so ready to try it. Oh, no. Somebody said eyeball is always my favorite part of the streams. Oh, thanks, Ethan. You just wait for the eyeball? Here it comes. Here maybe, it comes. Here maybe it comes. I just do a stream of just eyeballs. Let's see. The quality of that pencil is amazing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so this is like a super cheap pencil that you can get at... Um, at any office supply store it's a it's a pentel twist erase and i know i showed this before in the stream but it has the longest eraser out of any pencil that i've found so that's what i like about it i don't like having a separate tool for my eraser um but they come in three different sizes they come in uh, that i know of 0 0.5 0 0.7 and 0 0.9 um i only use a 0 0.5 um but you can just get different leads and lots of companies make different leads so um but i only use a 2b and a 3b and i use the 3b for the really dark stuff so let's see yeah the um <laughs> hashtag team no rhubarb <laughs> uh let's see the eyeball does make it come to life it's the same thing when i sculpt too once you um once you gloss the eyes, so if you once you paint the eyes black or if they're already like that, once the eyes are glossy, it totally changes the the look of the piece. Like it 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 really does give it life. So I think that's a I think that's a psychological thing that like is built into us that we know that like what a, what a, a living eye looks like. It's kind of strange. But people really respond to that. But when whenever we make our our, our figures, we're we're often really um, conscious about the type of varnishes and stuff that we use on, on on pieces. Because, so for example, I'll show this guy. This is um, Frumple Bun. You can see his teeth are glossy too. So his eyes are glossy and his teeth are glossy. So his whole body gets a matte varnish which it already starts off pretty matte but the matte varnish makes it even more matte and then you know once you put gloss on the teeth and gloss on the eyes it just totally brings it to life so um a lot of artists kind of skip that part which i find to be a shame let's see we have a peach tree as well that would be awesome Grilled peaches. Oh yeah. Ice cream. Yeah. So one one thing that we really like making is uh, I grill everything, uh, but we really like taking ripe peaches and grilling them until they get a little bit caramelized, and then uh, putting vanilla ice cream over top of it while it's still warm. A little bit of honey. Oh, and yeah, a little bit of honey and probably salt sometimes too. Um, but oh, it's so good. Let's see, Mitchell Strawberry Rhubarb Ice Cream. Ooh. We're big fans of Mitchell's. Is that we're, happening we're, right now? We're very close to a Mitchell's. So Amanda, my, my son's girlfriend actually works at one of the locations. So uh, 
we should we should ask her. Hey, you can text her right now. I have her phone number. That's true. Maybe we'll have to do that for you this weekend, Amanda. Sounds good. Let's see. Um, oh, but lightning shot it down and it died. Oh, no. The pot had been standing, was spread in a million pieces around the yard. Oh, oh no. Man. Oh, no. Oh, somebody said, uh, okay. Candace said it should be in season soon. So I like that there's like a Mitchell's watch. So Mitchell's is our local ice cream parlor. If anybody follows me on Instagram and has ever seen my ice cream scribbles, um, they're usually done in crayon and they're done from Mitchell's. So, uh, that's my favorite ice cream place locally and they make just amazing ice cream. So I try to go there as much as possible, but, um, I do, Amanda and I usually do drawings in crayon and then we hang them up on the bulletin board there and leave them there. So, um, talk about grilled peaches. That's funny, Jake. Oh, man. Real funny. <laughs> Real funny. I think they were flash fried. Uh, let's see. Uh, the key lime pie is the best. I was actually just talking about the key lime pie ice cream. Actually, my favorite is the wild berry crumble. That's my favorite uh, ice cream. I think it's, I think it's blackberries and raspberries, and then it has this like, um, this this crumble crust inside it. It's awesome. It's so good. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> But the the grilled peaches. You guys. You guys. So is is the is the feed getting any better here? Is the is the the live stream is this uh is this holding your guys' attention enough? Is there anything else I could be doing? Let's see. We have voodoo donuts and salt and straw ice cream here. Oh man. That's in Portland, right? Voodoo Donuts. Let's see. All this talk of ice cream is making me want ice cream. I always want ice cream. We went for ice cream three times this week, which is probably really bad. Let's see. Now I just want ice cream and peaches, lol. Yeah, that's um, that's my problem right now too. But I gotta finish all this work. Luckily, we have pie left over. Let's see. Three, four. 3.49 a.m. having a bite. Holy cow, you're, that's super late or early. Let's see. Um, but thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad it, it's working out. Let's see. Do you guys ever venture out to Jenny's in Chagrin? Have we been to Jenny's ice cream? We've been past it a million times. I went there once. It's never like ice cream time when we're there. Yeah, I think I went there one time. Um, no, but we, yeah, we walked by there last time we were there, but we'll, uh, I definitely want to go there. There's a place in uh, Cleveland, kind of near um, University Circle, called Piccadilly, which makes ice cream uh, with nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, and it's awesome. So if you guys have a place like that, you should go. Let's see. Uh, Amanda can juggle in the background. She can't juggle. I can juggle. She can't juggle, though. Can you do any... Stupid human tricks, Amanda? No, I can, Let's see. I can miss things that are thrown into the air. It's winter here and not good ice cream weather. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the thing about Ohioans, is that it's always ice cream weather. Yeah, I was going to say. it's negative 10 degrees outside. Like, I'm sorry about your bad weather, but that just sounds like excuses. You are not committed enough to ice cream. I think that's the problem. Yeah, I we, we go to Mitchell's in the dead of winter all the time. I think it's a, like northern thing yeah we can't be deterred well also we get so like stir crazy during the winter we just like we just want anything anything to make us feel better let's see is there voodoo donuts in colorado too where do you guys live um we live in cleveland so we have quite a few donut places um i'm a donut guy but i don't get out for donuts very often Let's see. I'm a night raven with wolf feet <laughs> in a solid onesie. Oh, well, I, I'm so not used... Like, as I get older, I'm having such a hard time staying up late. And I just fall asleep at, like, 8.30. So, the stream is helping. Although, recently, I've been staying up later. I've been getting better at that. Let's see. <laughs> I'll get more committed. Yes, get more committed to ice cream. If you want to get better at it, you got to be committed. 
Let's see. Oh, I missed the beginning. So it'll save on the stream or on my page. So if you want to go back and watch it, it'll be archived after this. So you'll you'll see it. Let's see. Um, oh, you're hosting me. Thank you so much, Hannah. Let's see, Krispy Kreme. Yes, we have Krispy Kreme here. Um, we. Um, okay, so we have a funny story. Uh, Amanda and I drove out to the Krispy Kreme location uh, and. We just wanted to get a donut. We just wanted to get a fresh donut off of the off of the line, and um, we walked in and they handed us a free donut, or they handed us a donut, and we just waited there for a minute, and uh, we're like, okay, like when are they going to take our money? And then they said, well, you get a free donut whenever the hot sign is on. So they have this like this neon sign outside that says hot. And whenever that sign is on, it means that donuts are just coming, they're just fresh and just coming right off the line and you can get a free donut. Um, so we drove all the way down there to buy a donut and we got a free donut and they were like amazing. Like you put them in your mouth, they just disappear. So um, there's my Krispy Kreme story. It's just that it was funny because I was like waiting to pay for it and they're like, no, it's free. Also, they got our order exactly right. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, me out. that was funny. Yeah, they just handed us what we were going to go in and order without asking. They're like, here like, you go. How like, do they know? What? I mean, to be fair, it's a donut place. Yeah, but they didn't know. <laughs> what could they possibly want? Exactly. Tuna fish? Let's see. Um, juggle some bug bites. No way. They're, they're too fragile. Those will end up all over yeah. the ground. <laughs> Take my money. No, it's free. That's totally how it was. I'm like, but I want to pay you. If I had known ahead of time it was free, I wouldn't. Have, I, I, I wouldn't have uh, been so put like taken aback by that. But I was just like, wait, w it's free, and then I was somehow insulted by that. <laughs> how dare you give me this thing I wanted to pay for? So I'm going to try and do a live stream. Um, I'm going to try and break it up Mondays and Thursdays because um, because I do the Kaiju on Thursday for Friday mornings, morning scribbles. Um, and I just kind of want to have a variety of like, you know, cute stuff and, and, and more monstery stuff. So um, I think that's the tentative plan right now. Uh, I might throw a third one in there if uh, I want to do things like watercolors and sculpting and stuff. Let's see. Jack Frost has, has yes, Jack Frost has very good donuts. Um, they're a little too sweet for me, I have to actually say. I like uh, Becker's donuts in Fairview Park. They're really good. Let's see. Um, wait, did you guys split a single donut? No, they gave us one each. Um, let's see. Spend two, five... Two and a half years in Australia, where I had my first donuts in my life at age 25. Wow. That's crazy. Let's see. Uh, you'll have an affiliate or partner in no time with numbers like these. Oh, really? See, I don't, I'm, I'm not really sure what it's, what's required for Twitch for a creative. Um, so hopefully that's true, because um, it'd be nice to get that subscriber button. Um, I do have the donate button all the way at the bottom of the um, my page, but I'm not trying. I'm not fishing. I'm just letting you know it's down there. If you're uh, if anybody ever wants to donate, not required, please. Um, so Patreon. If anybody follows me on Patreon, Patreon just rolled out like a whole new thing today. They rolled out. A new logo and uh, they updated the website and they updated all of their um, all of their sort of like back-end stuff for the creators um, and I have to say I'm not super stoked on the new logo um, I'm a big I'm a big uh, pro patreon guy but I don't like the new logo very much at all the other one was very recognizable and this one just seems a little impersonal but it doesn't change how I feel about the company at all. Um, Patreon has helped me out a lot. Um, and they've been very cool to me. Um, so, yeah, I just thought it was interesting that they, they decided to go with this logo that was so different. 
Let's see. <laughs> Let's see, hold on. Um, I eat donuts only if I make them. Wow. Yeah, that's probably a good policy. Uh, yeah, all patron updates were a big surprise. Yeah, it's 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 very strange looking, isn't it? Let's see. I want to become a patron, but no idea how how it works. Um, I'm a newbie. Just if you just go over to my page, I think it's Chris Reiniak, or it's uh, patreoncom slash Chris Reiniak. There's a video that'll basically explain it to you. Um, let's see. New Patreon logo colors remind me too much of Google. Yeah, it's just a little impersonal. I like the old logo better. Let's see. I think you need a consistent three viewers and like 50 followers for affiliate. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I think I have. I think I'm up to uh, over 100 followers. So um, let's see. And I love emotes. Yeah, the emotes are really funny. I'd like to make some of my own because um, then I can do. You know, I can make fun guys pop up like that. Um, let's see. They should have ran that by you. Also, I also didn't like it. Looks like a Korean character letter to me. The new Patreon logo. Yeah, I I don't think that like you know they're a three million dollar company. I I, I or thirty million dollar company or something like that. Like I I don't think they were gonna run anything like that by me. But I think they're just trying to um, you know they're 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 only a few years old and surprisingly like they're doing so well. Um, Actually, not surprisingly, because I actually know how they run the company, but um, there are a, a lot of really wonderful people run that company. Uh, but I'm surprised that they did a, a rebranding so soon, like after only three years. So I'd be curious to know. We're actually going to a Patreon convention later in the year, so I'll be curious to know exactly why they did that. There may have been some reason that we just don't know about. Let's see. It looks amazeballed. <laughs> I did make their mascot, actually. Uh, it's not really their mascot. Um, if in their um, in their cafeteria, there's a giant uh, a giant version of one of my one of my characters on the wall. It's like 18 feet tall. It's really it's really awesome. Let's see. I was number 94 follower. Top 100. Awesome. Thanks, Hot Chili Wrap. Let's see. Black Bolt is now following. Thank you. Adobe is now hosting you for up to 65 viewers. Whoa. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's the actual Adobe or if that's like a screen name Adobe. Whoa. What? There's all kinds of Adobe love incoming. <laughs> oh, whoa. Well, look at all the Adobe love incoming. <laughs> Holy crap. Hey, everybody. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but it's the real Adobe, apparently. We just shot to 92 viewers. Wow. Hi, Adobe. Hello, Adobe viewers. Thank you so much for... for uh... <laughs> For popping in, apparently Adobe was hosting, so that's that's wow. that's new. That's a lot of Adobe love. That's really awesome. I'm using an Adobe program right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I use Adobe products all the time. I love your products. Keyframer is now following. <laughs> Let's see, rip chat. It's a raid, <laughs> and others yell. Others yelling at us. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Let's say, well, we do it every time we sign up for the day. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, it's so nice to have so many new people in here, <laughs> especially for my only my second stream. Um, I wasn't expecting this many people. And so many new followers. Thanks, Green Mohawk. Um, yeah, I've just been drawn here for a while. Let's see how, how long, an hour and a half now. So... Uh, Let's see, I also use Adobe products all the time. Adobe should definitely sponsor Chris Reinick. He's the best. Thank you, Derek. Derek's going to be my new, like, hype man. I'm going to bring him with me everywhere. You can be my new, my new manager, Derek. Let's see. Second stream. Yeah, it totally is my second stream. Well, actually, not true. I did, this is my third stream. The first one uh, was just a test. But... Yeah, so I kind of did this guy start to finish. 
Let's see. No ex <laughs> So sorry if people are getting modded. Uh, I just I haven't I don't have my uh, my 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 mod bot is a little bit uh, excessive. Doesn't like to use uh, excessive caps. So I'm still working on the bugs on that one. Like I said, I'm new here, second stream. So sorry, Green Mahog. No no offense. Oh, there's more more Adobe love incoming. Oh, it's so awesome that you guys are in here. The viewer count really shot up this time. So, however that happened, I'm grateful for it. So thank you everybody for popping in and watching. Um, yeah, typically I think the first stream was about a, about an hour and forty minutes. Uh, it takes a, usually these drawings only take about an hour, but because I I keep looking up and chatting and answering questions and stuff. Um, you know, it takes a little bit longer. Let's see. Uh, I said, I love the drawing. His name shall be Puffy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi, hi, Whack Inc. Um, let's see. We love Moobot Raiders. Let's see. Green, I called it a Pomeranian dragon. Will any of the pins in the sale be limited edition or are they open edition? They're, so uh, they are all open edition until they sell out, basically. Um, Amanda's actually reprinted one of her pins so far. Um, I'm going to do it again, too. She's probably going to reprint it again. It's just, you know, people really like the pins and they're super easy to have remade. Um you know they're they're not they, I don't know I don't like making a limited edition I like I like as many people that want them to get them so um, but yeah she'll have all seven of the designs all seven of her new designs up for up for sale so um, let's see will Amanda be doing any streaming Amanda will you be doing any streaming or will you just be hijacking my stream every no, single I'm time No I'm streaming I'm figuring some things out but then I definitely want to do it. I'm um, letting Chris make all the mistakes, yeah. and then I'm going to learn from them. So, for everybody joining from the Adobe stream, the disembodied voice in the background is my girlfriend and artist, Amanda Louise Spade. So, um, she's going to pop over and say hi. So, hi. <laughs> there's the camera. Um, so, uh, yeah, she, she just sits in the back and judges me, and, and, you know, is my voice of reason sometimes. So, uh when I say, when I refer to me as we, I'm talking about m her and I, so I know it's confusing for probably new people. So let's see, uh, so many, oh, what's Amanda doing? What are you doing right now? Um, I'm working in an Adobe product. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Premiere Pro currently to edit a video of Pipsqueak taking photos in British Columbia. There you go. Uh, let's see. Hoping to get my hands on a drawing. I've missed out two times. Need to be quicker. So there's going to be like 45 drawings, so you have a good chance this time. Let's see. Can't wait for the sale. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Hi, mis mysterious voice from behind the curtain. Is it a real person? Thought it was the voice of God. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go to my head. Yeah, I was going to say, don't encourage her. She already has too much sway in this house. I'm just giving this guy some uh, some spottage. So uh, if you're just joining the stream, which everybody from Adobe seems to be, um, this is every Friday I do a drawing on my for my Instagram feed called uh, uh, my my Instagram feed is. It's not called morning scribbles, but what I do every day is morning scribbles five days a week. Um, and Friday is always Kaiju Friday. So this is my Kaiju for tomorrow. So I haven't done a lot of like quadruped Kaiju. So I thought I would do one that was a little like dog or cat like. Let's see. Thanks for the follow, Father Horse. Let's see. Do you allow shout outs in here? Shout yourself out, Amanda. We will follow. I don't know if I know what you mean there. I've got nothing Twitch related currently. Yeah, I don't think she has a. But know. if you look at my name on any social media platform, I am there. Yeah. Yeah. Check her out on Instagram. That's probably the best place, right? Yeah. It's just my name, Amanda Louise Spade. 
as it is displayed. It's a Moobot command. What's that? Shoutouts. Oh. Like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. We're going to learn eventually. Yeah. That's like, I figured I would just jump into this and then make all the mistakes in front of everybody. And then, uh, I, like I said, the, the community in Twitch knows more than I do, so it, you guys are incredibly helpful. Let's see. Can I link her Instagram? Let's see. I don't know. Let me see. Let's see if I can do it. She is the dust bunny lady. That's me! There you go. Hopefully that link works. Let me let me know if that link works. Yeah, if you guys have ever seen, there's a in, there's a uh, a YouTube video called The Maker. Amanda did the puppets for that video, so worked. Thanks. Yay, Yay it works. Yeah, that is my. Uh, I'm I'm very I'm very fortunate to be dating the lovely Amanda Louise Spade. Oh jeez. She's pretty much the best. I mean, like, seriously. And I'm her biggest fan. I get to see all of her work before it leaves the house. That's really nice. Well, you deserve it. Let's see. Um, great, eventually when you get the hang of Moobot, you can have time chat posts linking your social media and accounts and chat. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's awesome. Oh, thanks. That's actually really smart. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> that's not invasive at all. No, I appreciate it. Uh, somebody said, holy shit, saw that movie. It was really well done. Um, let's see. I love The Maker. Let's see. Um, the Maker's my favorite short films. Do you guys have any plans on audiovisual projects in the future? Uh, no. Uh, no, we don't have any plans. Um, we have ideas, but there's no plans, uh, as of yet. We're trying to get, we're getting some toy, some toy projects off the ground right now. Um, and, uh, some, you know, just general branding and merchandise stuff. Uh, it takes a lot of time and money to get this stuff going. So, uh, we're baby steps right now. Baby steps. Let's see can't link patreon here i will hannah with all your know-how i should just make you a mod thank you for all your help yes thank you it's super super helpful There's my Patreon. Let's see. Sorry to be a weirdo, but where's the fluffy guy's fourth leg? It's behind him. I'm I'm gonna put that in in shadow. That's not a weirdo. That's not weirdo at all. That's a that's called being observant. I just haven't put it in yet. I'm not gonna give that one a hard shot uh, a hard outline because I want it to like really recede into the background. So. I will do it absolutely last. Let's see. I would help out, but I don't know much in the terms of Moobot. Yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't. I don't know a lot about the. Um, I don't know a lot about the. The mod situation on here yet. So, we're like I said, lot, we're learning a lot, and I appreciate all you guys' help. Let's see. I'm a YouTube guy, not so much Twitch. Let's see, can you can I make your monsters in ZBrush for my portfolio? Uh, 
sure just make sure it's very 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 clear that they are um they were designed by me and sculpted by you um I, and and as long as you're not making any money off of it um that's totally cool especially for a portfolio situation yeah. too yeah and send me uh send me pictures of them when they're done because i'd really like to see what you did let's see I'm a YouTube guy, not, not so much Twitch. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of neither. I have a YouTube channel, but it's, you know, it's going to be really populated with these tr Twitch streams, so it'll just be redundant. Um, just because I don't have time to do all the things. Let's see. Whack Inc. is now following. Thank you. Let's see. Oh, man, ZBrush is a great program. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just now getting into ZBrush. It's definitely... Um, a steep learning curve. Uh, uh, I'll get there. I have a long way to go. I, I clearly don't know what I'm doing whenever I get in that program. It's like sculpting with my toes. Let's see. Let's see, I remember someone did one of your Bat Monster Christmas on Facebook. Yeah, I've seen a lot. There's been a lot of people. Um, there's been a lot of people doing models on my stuff. Did, Derek, did you just, did you just give me a donation? I th I'm pretty sure that you did. And I missed it. Ah. Oh. Sure. Sure, Derek. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Let's see. Is it good if I will be messaging you a link on Facebook or email? Uh, do it uh, through my email. That would be the best way. Uh, can always just save your Twitch stream and post it to YouTube. This way people can see your past streams. Yeah, that's totally what I'm doing. Um, yeah, the, I think Twitch only saves the streams for like 15 days or something like that. Um, so, yeah, you can only... Like, but then they allow you to export it. It's super, super easy. So... Oh, is it Kesho that did it? Somebody, somebody left me a... Somebody left me a, a donation, but it was really awesome. So, not me, it was anonymous. <laughs> well, whoever left me the donation, it was awesome. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Mary Wrights is now following. Thank you so much. Let's see, you can be real fancy and stream to Twitch and YouTube at the same oh my time. Gosh. Oh my gosh, my brain would explode. How would you ever keep up with the, I, with the chat? I don't know. I mean, is there a chat in YouTube also when that's going on? I think so. Oh man. So I'm going back and darkening up some of the, the areas that I, I shaded in because uh, it gets kind of obliterated. All right, so here's that, here's that foot that somebody asked about. Going in. There he is, foot. Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Rebecca, for the donation. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. So let's see. Um, ben would have to moderate. Yeah, we have to get my son to moderate. Um, although he gets too distracted and he just wants to make jokes the whole time. So, but uh, we'll teach him. We'll teach him how to how to get on the train here. Let's see. Uh, huzzah! Well, let's see. Yes, YouTube stream has a chat and automatically makes a video of the stream afterwards. Man, <laughs> Steve and the Can Can Girls would have to uh, moderate. Again, thank you so much, Rebecca. I, it's super, super appreciated. Um, I'm, I'm really, you know, I wasn't sure about the, about the, the stream thing. Um, and I was sitting on doing this for about a year. Because I, I went back and I looked at my email to the um, the people over at Twitch and uh, and it was it was from a year ago, and uh, and I was like, man, I really sat on that forever. But I'm glad I'm doing it. I'm I'm glad I just kind of jumped in and and it's I'm having fun with it and it's awesome talking to you guys. So uh, appreciate you guys hanging out and and chatting. And I'll figure out how to get this all set up on a. Uh, on another screen in front of my face so that I can I don't have to keep looking up. So let's see, what is Twitch Prime? 
Can somebody explain Twitch Prime? Uh, somebody that knows Twitch better than me. Let's see, there you go. I think that's what it is. I think I think you get a free. Um, I think you get a free sub, free subscription um, when you sign up for Twitch Prime. So you can like subscribe to a channel that has that set up. Um, I don't have that set up yet because I'm not partnered yet. I'm not, I'm not part of the affiliate program. Um, I think I have to do a few more streams before they give me that. But uh, yeah, the, the channels that have uh, subscription buttons you can just subscribe to them for free. So, and that, that helps out that, those channels. So, let's see. Oh, apparently you get it if you have Amazon Prime. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and you have free monthly games. No, oh, so if you have Amazon Prime, Oh. you already have it, it looks like. That's awesome. So we already have it. I have Amazon Prime. There you go. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, we've been making some ridiculous purchases on Amazon Prime lately, and my daughter is so disappointed because we get these big packages in the mail, and she's like, what is it? What is it? And we open it up, and it's like... 48 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> she's like, you guys are so boring. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're like, awesome, we don't have to go to the store for toilet paper for two years. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you just need to link your Twitch account with Amazon Prime. Huh, good to know. Let's see. Well, Amazon bought Twitch for some billion number. Now they have a deal where you get goodies on both ends with it. That's pretty nice, though. It's nice that they, like, link them both together. Yeah, I think we got, we got paper towel and toilet paper all in the same week. So we have all the paper goods we could ever need. <laughs> see, 48 rolls of TP is exciting when you're an adult. It totally is. Let's see. Uh, this is what we do too. My my autistic son loves opening all the boxes and building forts. Yeah, see, that's awesome. We just the boxes just pile up. Actually, what's really nice for us is we ship so many things that uh, the boxes we end up using them, and then it ends up like just being free sh packing materials. So. Let's see. TP is super exciting when you're out of it too. True. <laughs> that's very true. My kingdom for four squares. So my dad, my parents owned a business when I was younger and my dad would just order an extra box of toilet paper when he would order it for the, for the shop. And uh, the toilet paper I was ordered, you know, because he had like all these blue collar guys working in the back and he just, he didn't want to give them good toilet paper. So he would just get the stuff that's like the equivalent of typing paper. Um, and he would get the same thing for us, too. So we'd have just, like, the scratchiest, worst toilet paper in the whole world. I mean, this is, like, below the worst the worst grade that there is. I mean, I don't think you should be uh, using, you know, beach towels for that. But uh, it should be a little bit nicer. <laughs> but, it, yeah, my dad would be like, hey, you got more toilet paper. It would just be this, this awful stuff. And it came in these huge boxes, so it would just never run out. So as I grew up, I was like, I'm never going to do that to my kids. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I still build forts. Yeah, we build blanket forts with the kids sometimes. Let's see. Um, I'm back. Welcome back, Green Mohawk. Let's see. Quilted Northern Bears would hate that. <laughs> Let's see. I, I vote for Puffy the Pomeranian Dragon. Type 1 if you need, if, if you agree, and 2 if not. Wait, so you guys know it was bad toilet paper at the time? I just knew it wasn't good. I knew that, like, you know, they would... When I would go to school, it was better at school than it was at home, and that's often a problem. So, yeah, I definitely knew. And this is, this is well into, you know, just before I went to college, so... Yeah, it never changed. I love that there's like voting wars for the name, but he's not a dragon. He's a he's a kaiju, so that's your first mistake right there. Not a dragon. Colored toilet paper. Oh yeah, I remember co colored toilet paper. Like there was like yellow yeah, pink. and pink. Yeah, that was that makes me a little uncomfortable. So oh, somebody had blue. Um. Yeah. Ugh. 
Yeah, I think my grandma used the used the pink toilet paper. Dusty Rose. Oh, uh, <laughs> is that what it was called? I don't know. That's what every. My whole room was Dusty Rose in the eighties. Oh when yeah. I was growing up, couldn't escape it. All right, this guy is getting there. He's getting pretty close to done. I don't want to overwork it. Somebody said, uh, my grandma had peach colored TP. Oh, peach. That's even yeah. worse. I think they found out the colored TP was bad for you. Oh, man. Yikes. Yeah. That's one thing you don't want to have bad for you. I love that this conversation devolved into talking about toilet paper. But I blame Amazon for that. Thanks, Amazon. But earlier in the week, we had an exciting Amazon delivery because we came with two webcams. So there you go. And 50 feet of, uh, of Ethernet cable. So that's one <laughs> that was a good purchase. Let's see. Can also get black ice cream cones and black ice cream. Um, I've had black ice cream. Yeah. It was sesame. Yeah, I've had that too. And we, we just bought black rice today, actually. You were going to buy those black ramen noodles, too. Yeah, we just, we're super goths, so anything, I don't know, I don't know how much I like black foods, but I don't own any colored clothing, so I'm okay with anything black. Let's see, I saw black mac and cheese today. Oh, oh gross. Yeah. Let's see, Amazon is better than eBay. My eBay got hacked along with my email yesterday. Oh, that sucks. Let's see, but the rice and ramen is colored with squid ink, isn't it? I don't know. I think the rice is naturally like Yeah, that. the rice, I think, is, is, is black. $5 says that Amanda is doing research on Shut it up. Right, right now. <laughs> I'm totally doing it right now. <laughs> Amanda likes to... Uh, <laughs> arm herself with knowledge when she doesn't know something it's totally natural okay <laughs> so says, i seriously didn't think ebay was still around i thought it followed myspace into obscurity um no i mean you still have ebay alerts for things right for yeah. collectibles mm -hmm. and stuff so i think i think ebay only exists for uh vinyl toy collectors to flip things on <laughs> and obscure weird antiques which we buy from time to That's time what I use it for. see damn flippers yeah flippers I don't know I don't want to get into it about flippers yeah, that's how Amanda is, too. If she doesn't know something, she has to figure it out. Let's see. Why do I always wear black? Answer, in case of your funeral. Uh, that's a very funny question. It takes a lot of thought out of things, also. Um, oh, and you can buy old, old networking gear on, on eBay. Let's see. only reason I use eBay now is because Amazon doesn't take PayPal anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, flippers can be um, the the worst for us. So if it's like something that's like a production toy that there's a lot of, right? And it was just something that there was, you know, enough of them to go around. And you know, you put it up on eBay and you don't you don't sell it for a crazy amount. Okay. But if you come to one of our shows and you buy an original piece and then it shows up on eBay the next day for like $300 more, um, I don't know. I take, I take offense to that for sure um, because it's, it's making it harder for the, for the people that we want to buy our stuff. Like it's making it more expensive for them. Like we said at a certain price, we don't want you to have to pay more. Um, and it's not just that the other person is making money off of it. Like, I think everybody should be able to make money, but, uh, don't take advantage of our fans. That's, that's what I don't like. You know, I can take care of myself. Don't take, don't take advantage of my fans. Uh, I can figure it out. Like, 
if you want to try and sell some on eBay, go ahead. Go ahead and try, but um, I don't like what it does to the fans. So, let's see. Fun as always, love the drawing, but time for bed. Oh, good night, D'Artagnan. It was great. Thanks for thanks for stopping by again, and hope to see you next week. Let's see. Uh, I hate it when someone grabs a bunch of one thing, just turn and mark it up. That happens all the time. Let's see. The guy that makes hang drums, you have to set up appointments to meet him and see. Huh. Someone's trying to sell your DKI 2015 thimble stump set for 180 right now. That's not too bad, actually. If it's the whole set? Oh, for the exclusive set of two. That's dumb. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. way... I was going to say, for a whole case, you can, you can get a whole case for 140 Let's see. Um... Let's see. I like money and all, but I don't like... I don't like to use it much less so it was working. Yeah, that's that's not cool. Yeah, the two pieces that's that's way too high a price for those two pieces. And the the problem with those ones is those are pretty low numbers and they're very hard to get, so they're definitely taking advantage of of the system. So um I don't know. I wish I I wish I had more of them so I could just put them up and like get them to people. You know, we we like to make things we like to make exclusives sometimes just to make things special for the people that are there, not to not to make it just so that it's hard for people to get it. But, you know, you put in the effort of, like, say Comic-Con, for example. Like, we're going to have one, one Thimblesum Hollow figure um, as an exclusive at, uh, at San Diego Comic-Con this year. By the time you walked in the door at San Diego Comic-Con, you've already spent multiple thousands of dollars just to get there. And, you know, you should be awarded some sort of, you know, something special. Because it's really difficult to get to something like that. Um, I don't like how expensive it is to go to San Diego Comic-Con. Um, if I had my druthers, I don't think I would go. Um, just because it feels so exclusionary because it's so expensive, but um, it, I don't know. I, I'd rather do things at, at Designer Con, but I don't know. I think it's nice to have exclusive for things like that. For like, You put in a lot of effort to get there. Let's see. Oh, good night, Hot Chili Rep. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out. Hopefully we'll see you again next time. Let's see. Oh, what's the exclusive? So, um... The exclusive is going to be a third, oh, I'm sorry, a sixth colorway of Slumber Guppy. It's the only one that has a separate color. So, um, let's see. Chris and Amanda made a Twitch community in two streams. That's impressive. I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of really surprised by it. it was, it's awesome. I, I have to thank my friend Bill Duran for for hosting over on Punished Props. So that was a big deal. Uh, let's see, since I'm never close to where you guys vend, I can never get my hands on bigger pieces and I won't pay for flip pieces on eBay. I'd rather give you get my money directly. Well, thank you. I'm sorry that stuff is hard to get. Let's see, it's 11 a.m. in Tokyo. I've been delaying my breakfast two hours now. Go, go eat! Go eat! Uh, let's see, you make me, you make me feel super manly calling me hot whacking. Uh, let's see. Um... You might have to ask people to help you out with their releases. Yeah, sometimes um, if you get to know the communities of people that that buy our stuff, and there's some really great people, like actually they were in the feed tonight um, in the chat, uh, they will help you out. Like like um, typically they call that muling, if you didn't already know that, where they'll if they're going to be at an event, you can just hit them up and say, hey, could you pick this up for me? I'll give you an extra couple bucks for shipping or like so you can buy some food while you're there or something like that. Um, and a lot of times people, if they know you're like a stand up person and you're not going to if you're not a flipper, um, they'll totally help you out. And we've had people come up to the booth and say, oh, I'm getting this for such and so. And a lot of times we know who those people are. Um, because we've, we've kind of cultivated a, 
relationship with a lot of our fans and um and we're cool with it like we will will help out um with certain things so uh within reason we'll definitely help out so but it's good to get to know people other people that buy our stuff so um let's see uh yeah, it's just nice to it's nice to help people out. Um, and what's really awesome is like a lot of the people in our in a lot of our fans have just become our friends, and and they come up to our booth and they buy stuff from us, and we feel super bad selling it to them because like they're our buddies now. Um, and you know, it's a really great group of people. Like I, I really like our fans, and I like seeing them year to year at conventions and wherever we run into them. So. Um, yeah, it's a it's a friendly group of people. All right, I think this is wrapping up. I think uh, I think I'm winding down here. Uh, I will uh, give you guys a little tour of my shelf up here, though. In one second, so you guys can see my my little collection of mostly my own pieces. Let's see. Um, I'd love to have Carrie Mule. Just haven't met anybody who's trustworthy and reliable. Um, just ask around. Uh, ask around in here. So, is there a way to direct message on Twitch? I don't. That I don't know. Oh, there, yeah, it's called Whispers. <laughs> there is like a little, uh, it's a little square um, uh, word balloon up at the top. So I think I think that's how you do it. See, I knew something. I knew something about Twitch. All right, so what do you think? Do you think this guy's done, guys? I, I think he's pretty well done. Yeah, let's call him finished. I'm going to sit here and do this forever. So, um, okay, so I'm going to call this guy finished. So, uh... Hang out for a minute, and I'll show you guys a little tour of my shelf up here, uh, so you guys know what you're missing. But, um, hey, I just discovered your channel. I love your art style. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, Whack Inc., uh, about, yeah, being able to see the muscle through all the, all the scales and fur and stuff. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab my, my camera here, and unfortunately, the... Uh, I have the focus turned off, so I gotta figure out how to turn that back on. So it's gonna go to autofocus for a second here. Um, so if it gets crazy, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, save that. Okay, I'm grabbing this camera. So it's not gonna be super big, but um, here is my shelf of stuff and like I said I'm doing this super on the small camera because my other camera is uh, is attached but so here's here's a couple of my my guys and that guy in the back that's a real head a chaos beast man actually I think it's just a chaos man um, you know some of my figures these are all my guys uh, let me fix the let me fix the uh, the white and the uh, exposure here. Exposure. Whoa! Sorry about that. Okay, so these are all my my toys. These are all Figgle bits. Um, there's a uh, a grub thumb. These guys are Snibora. Uh, this is the Fatty Looper. That guy just came out. Um, you can see there's like a, this is the new purple smidgen that's coming out. Um, this is a new figure that doesn't even have a name yet. Um, there's two full, uh, another dew drop and another smidgen. And then you guys get to see all the colors. So these are all the colors of all the figures that have been made of all the minifigures. So these are, those are smidgen. This is dew drop. These are all the bug bites that have been made. 
So sorry it's so dark. Yeah, I was asking what they're all made of. So they're, these guys up here are resin. Uh, thank you for that, Amanda. Uh, these guys are all resin up here. Uh, resin. 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 Uh, rotocast vinyl. Uh, rotocast vinyl. Resin. Uh, Japanese vinyl. Um, and then these guys are all resin, and that's resin, and resin, and resin. So, and that's a cat skeleton. <laughs> that's made of bone. So, that's what, I, that's what I'm looking at. Um, so, there's that. Okay, so I'm going to put this back right here. Give me a hold. Oh, Amanda's down there. My corner of the cave. She's super, she's super dark over there. Oh, is it too dark? It's too dark. Here. Here. Oh, there she is. See her hiding down there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think I'm going to wrap this up. I think I'll um, I'll do a, a nicer, like, sort of uh, uh, tour of the studio at some point. But, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, for, uh, for hanging out. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, Derek, yeah, scary. I, you should see the rest of the house. Uh, there's a lot more bones and taxidermy where that came from. So um, thanks again for hanging out, everybody. Thanks for all the new uh, follows and everybody that popped over from uh, Bill Duran's channel and from the Adobe channel. So um, I will be back Monday for sure, um, taking this weekend off because it's Father's Day. So... Um, yeah, thanks again, everybody. This is getting better and better every time. So I really appreciate it. And um, I will stay in the chat for a minute and respond to everybody, but I'm going to get out of here. So signing off. Thanks again. And uh, next time, who knows what we'll do. We'll draw something. All right, guys. Bye.